I review a lot of mountain bikes, but another popular segment that I like to cover is commuter bikes. Having been a bike commuter off and on over the years, commuter bikes have always piqued my interest. Like this bike from Schwinn, this is the Junction. It's sold at Walmart at the time of this video for under $300. That price puts it among the more affordable bikes, built with commuting and urban riding in mind. 27.5 wheels always in my preferred lane. Here's the barcode and the item number, though I will put a link down in the description. Let's take a look at the hang tag and see what Schwinn says about this bike. Clearly, it's labeled as commuter and for multi-use, meaning casual riding, fitness, and or commuter duties. Key features, an aluminum frame, a suspension fork, disc brakes, and they list it as 7-speed with twist shifters, plural. Of course, the wheel size. Let's check all this and see how it stacks up with the bike as it actually sits. Starting up top at the bars where the first thing that jumps out at me is that they are wide for a commuter bike, 735 millimeters. There is a slight rear sweep and a nice diameter, 31.8. On the bar ends, grips, Schwinn branded. These are rubber comfort grips, nice and thick, though you will notice the right grip shorter, that's to accommodate the twist shifter. The card said shifters, but there's only one. It's a Micro Shift 7 speed model M25-7. There are also alloy levers for the disc brakes. We'll look at those in a second. First, the stem, which is short, 55 millimeters. The junction has a threadless headset and a stylized modern barrel profile to the head tube. Inside of which is the 1 and 1 8 inch straight steer for this very basic Schwinn suspension fork. Up to 60 millimeters of travel, this is nothing fancy but it will do some smoothing on city streets and alleys. Now to my first surprise on this bike, I expected at this price bolt-on front wheels. Well, how about this? A quick release up front. Nice. Also nice, at least to me, this is a 27.5, my favorite wheel size. This bike is a one size when it comes to the frame offerings, meaning it's designed to fit a specific rider range looking at the wheel card. We can see this is for riders 5 foot 6 inches to 6 foot 2 inches. More of this wheel set, the rims, those are 25 millimeters. The outer diameter measurement, their double wall alloy rims, Schwinn branded, their black steel spokes, steel hubs, and tires perfect for the city streets and gravel path riding that this bike is built to handle. Tire size 27.5 by 2.0, though they have a wider hot rod look, at least by commuter standards. Let's look at the drivetrain, a make or break point on a commuter bike. The pedals, plastic, Schwinn branded, the usuals. Crank arms, these are pro wheel alloy crank arms, 170 millimeter. The single chain ring, and this is an interesting choice, I counted it's a 36 tooth, which is a bit large for a seven speed. We'll see how it works out in my test ride. At the rear, there's a micro shift derailleur mounted to the frame via a replaceable derailleur hanger. Not always given at this price point, so it's good to see it. The seven rear speeds is via a freewheel, a mega range freewheel, 14 to 34 tooth. Not a lot of range considering the size of that chain ring. So as I mentioned earlier, we'll see in the ride. Keeping the seat post in the frame is a quick release seat post clamp. The post itself, 27.2 millimeter diameter. Perched atop that, a saddle note. I haven't seen this particular design before in the Schwinn lineup, at least not with these graphics. It's the usual gloss on matte, but there's these little X's in there that just haven't seen before. And it is wider than normal, so we'll see how this works out too. The X's continue onto the frame graphics, like the one that tells us this is an aluminum frame, a frame that's definitely a step up from the sub $300 price point expectation. Meaning, I am very impressed with this frame. The finish, it's beautiful. Navy blue with a glossy clear coat. It has internal cable routing, nice welds, and tapering tubes. This is a step up for budget commuter frames. As I mentioned, this is one size, that size being 17.5 inches. I have a full list of geometry specs and measurements down in the description for people that are into that kind of thing. The one most viewers ask about is the head tube angle. On this bike, it's 71 degrees. Along with the beautiful navy finish and the nice build quality, this frame features dual bottle cage mounts and rack mount points. I talked about them earlier. The bike has front and rear disc brakes. They're mechanical disc with both rotors being 160 millimeter. That's the components. Now it's time to detag this freshly assembled bike and get it on the road for the first time. Box the city streets, air in the tires, and go. 
First impressions. Right away, the lower gears, they're enough to easily get me going. The wide bars make it easy to dive into turns, and the basic suspension enough to smooth out a few alley bumps. And ergonomically, I'm very comfortable. I'm 5 foot 10 inches, well within its range, and it does fit me as it says it should. Let's go back to the gearing. Working through the gears for the first time, the Microsoft shifter and the derailleur, they're consistent, albeit loudly confirming shifts. And to that gear range, which was my big question with that large chain ring, is the low going to be low enough? You know, I think for most people, unless you live in a city with huge hills, you'll be able to pedal in low gear with light effort. Now, if speed is your thing, you can clunk up to the high gears and you'll love the high gear. This bike can scoot. But I'm sure the important pressing question from keen eye viewers is how many of you wondered how long before I noticed that it still had the quick release tag on. Well, about 30 minutes. Where is this bike going to excel? As a general keep in shape around the neighborhood bike or riding to class. This would make a great campus bike, especially if you need to get to class fast. If you are beyond college, this does of course qualify as a commuter. It's agile and comfortable. Having ridden these same streets and sidewalks over the years, literally commuting to both class and work, the junction could have gotten me everywhere I needed to go. This is a bike I would keep on city streets and paved paths, or on gravel, this is the only gravel I could find in town. These tires will work on gravel and packed dirt paths just fine. Where they really excel is on asphalt and concrete. And as you can see, that suspension, even though it is a budget suspension, it's handling these city bumps just fine. I rode this for a day around town, and I'll say on everything but the hilliest of areas, I think it's a well-rounded bike for those looking for something in this class. I had fun giving it a go, and how about this? The perfect stop to show off the Schwinn star in the rotor. I got that on the first take, believe it or not. Summary. This looks and feels like the bike it is supposed to be. A multi-use commuter bike. There is a delicate balance when you get into these budget bikes, the sub $300 bikes. It's so easy to tilt more towards budget with the build than actually building a bike to be able to do what it needs to do. I can confidently say that in the case of the Junction, this bike ends up being what it needs to be. That's a win for Schwinn and for potential owners. Owners with an asterisk. If you are in a big city with a lot of big hills, like say San Francisco, I don't know that this gearing is optimal for that environment. Everywhere else it should be okay, but super super hilly, probably not. I do appreciate the small things like the removable derailleur hanger on an aluminum frame and the look of this frame. That finish and the graphics, a side note on those graphics, the X's I mentioned on that saddle, they carry over into all the other graphics on the bike all the way to the junction name, right there in the O, where there is an X and I finally get it, junction, crossroads, crossing. Now that's really thinking out a graphic scheme. Good job whoever designed this at Schwinn. That's my look at the Schwinn Junction. Now I want to know what you think about this bike and how about the components for this price. Comment below, you know I always read your comments. Thanks for watching Kev Central and have a great day.